Hi guys, it's Allie with Chaos Monkey Creations and I just wanted to do a um, review of the card Topu Sock Yarn from Hobium. Um, as you guys know, I got this stuff in a haul um, a while back and I actually finished a pair of socks out of it and I just wanted to kind of give you guys, you know, the heads up on what I thought about how it, how it knit up. So I did knit a pair of socks here. And as you can see, these are pretty pretty long, pretty good size socks. This is an average size foot. They're for my boyfriend. He wears probably, I would say, like an eight and a half in men's. So his feet aren't huge, which is why I make him so many socks. Because if he had huge feet, I probably wouldn't. Um, but then I also, because of that, I can also make the cuffs really long the way he likes them. So. Um, this is after they've been washed and blocked, and if nobody, <laughs> if you guys don't know what that means, which I'm sure you do, it just means that they were soaked in warm water with some wool wash, um, lay, dried on sock blockers, just to kind of get the stitches a chance to relax. And that's what blocking does. It kind of, number one, cleans it, because you've been touching the item you've been making. Um... It washes it and then it also, um, the warm water, kind of sitting in warm water allows the stitches to readjust and to even out and to look really good. And it also, in some cases, will allow the um, yarn to plump up if it's going to and have the yarn change characteristics after it's been washed. So to show you guys what it looks like in the ball, this is a different colorway and you can see that it's a pretty thin sock yarn. And it is on the thinner side. So I brought some other yarns to show you. For instance, here's a Croy, and you can see how much thicker the Croy is. I hope you can see, but the, the Croy is much thicker. Um, let me see if I can hold them a little bit closer side to side. But you can see if my camera is going to focus, which it doesn't look like it wants to. It wants me to hold it further away. There we go. But you can see that the uh, Hobium yarn is the gray, and then of course, and this is a mix. This, this particular Croy is like a marled, which means it has a couple of strands of different colors wrapped together. But they do a lot of uh, self-striping yarns and things like that, and they're all basically about the same thickness as this one. And then here is a Knit Picks yarn that I had in stash, and you can see it is also thicker than the Croy. Right there. And again, I don't know what it's trying to focus on, but it's not focusing. I think it's trying to focus on the socks in the background. And I can't really block that off. But you can definitely see there's a difference in the thickness, even if it's blurry. So just to give you kind of examples of like the average sock yarn, um, commercial sock yarn, that this is on the thinner side. So um, I did notice that right away, but I've used thinner sock yarns before. And... Um, what else did I notice? While I was working with it, I also noticed it tended to split quite a bit on the needles. Um, and I didn't, I always use the same needles. What did I use on these? I think I used my Haya Haya Sharps size 0, 40 inch long cable fixed circulars for Magic Loop because I did these two at a time toe up. So I do did use the sharp needles, so it did tend to kind of catch the yarn, but I did notice it was a little splitty. Um, if you use a blunter needle, you may not have that problem. So I did notice I had to be very careful because I would split a lot of stitches and I'd usually catch it on the way back and fix it. Um, and then just to show you what I did here, I did a uh, toe up. It's a little squished because I've had it folded sitting. But I do the Judy's Magic cast on for the heel, for the toe, sorry. And then uh, I do a fish lips kiss heel with the garter. I put ribbing on the bottom because he likes it that way. So that's just a one by one rib because it gives him extra cushion, does a lot of walking. And then I did, what did I do up here? Was this a three by two? I think I did a three by two rib up the front of the sock and then like an 
inch and a half of ribbing at the top. And if my camera doesn't start focusing, I'm going to be upset with it. There we go. So, um, that's just how I made, I usually make his socks this way. So, and I did notice after blocking, to get back to the blocking, is the yarn did plump up a little bit. So it did, I don't know if you can kind of tell the texture here, is that it did fill out a little bit. Also, you guys got to think during manufacturing, sometimes they coat the yarn with stuff. Excuse me bumping stuff and so sometimes just washing that off can really let the yarn plump up a little bit. Sometimes they coat it with something to um, let it spin through the machinery faster and without getting any problems. I mean it wasn't obvious it's not like this was waxed you know what I mean but you can definitely tell there's probably like a light coating of something. Once that washes off too the yarn tends to plump up a little bit. So for my overall impressions is I liked it and the colors were really clean. Sometimes you'll have problems with the color changes like there'll be splotches or speckles or um, you know that the yarn didn't dry completely in one spot and it gets all over the other colors. This wasn't like that at all. And the, the striping here, this is almost supposed to be like a fair aisle and mine were really long this way because um, I only do a 60 to 64 inch around sock. So it made these blocks really long. I think in the picture, they weren't quite that long of blocks. So my blocks might be a little longer because of that, because you can see here the, the speckle block. But um, I like it. It's really cool, and there was no color bleed. The lines were really sharp in between color changes. So here it's a little not, but that's because it was going from the orange to the black, but no big there. And you could see, even with the splotchy colors, they didn't bleed or touch each other, you know what I mean? Like, I've seen some, some yarns too. So overall impressions is I like it, especially for the price, because it was like six something a ball for two socks. So that's less than like three dollars and change per sock. And even for Croy, like for this one ball of Croy, on average in the store, I don't have a tag on here, but if I buy it at Hobby Lobby, it's over five dollars a ball unless you get a coupon. Um, online, that's three to five. Three if you can get a really good sale. So, and um, just to show you what I used and how much I had left over, this was, oh, how much was in this total ball? 100 grams, or 420 meters, and my socks weighed um, 72 grams, and I had 28 grams left over. So you can see, even with an average size foot and a really long cuff, I had all of this yarn left over. I had um, 28 grams. So you can see that you're really getting your money's worth. So you can make them, I could probably make some, maybe some shorty socks out of this. I've never made shorty socks, but I don't know how much do you need for a shorty sock. Because if it's 28 grams total, that's only 14 grams each. You would probably need more than that for a shorty sock. Um, I only don't know. I, I would probably put this in a scrap blanket or something like that. But that's just kind of give you an idea that I used a lot and I had that much left over. So if you have a husband with really big feet, you'll definitely have enough to do the big foot size. Sorry, I've got some rattling here. Let me move that. There we go. My scale was up there. You'll have enough for the to do the bigger foot and still do a long cuff. Um, even if you have to do like 70 stitches. I imagine you could probably get a decent sized cuff and maybe a bigger foot, depending on how big the guy's foot is. If it's like a million, then probably not. You'd probably have to buy an extra ball, like usual. But anyway, those were, that's my overall impressions, is I really like it. It is on the thinner side, but that doesn't mean it's a bad sock yarn. I don't know about wear yet, because um, my boyfriend's going to start wearing these, and he is really, really rough on his socks. So it will be a really good judge to see how long these last because he still has croys. I made him three years ago and the very first pair of croy I made him are probably five years old and they have holes, finally. So I remember I knitted a tight gauge too to make sure that they are tough socks. So um, we'll see how well these wear. Also keep in mind that I do do the, the heel double thickness and the bottom double thickness because he is so rough 
and he likes the extra cushion. But it's usually where he wears out is the ball of the foot here and the heel, the back of the heel, where it rubs on your shoe. So um, I'll see when I do a couple of washes later, I'll let you guys know if it just completely fell apart or if they held up really well or not. But so far I'm pretty impressed for the price. The color wasn't bleedy. It was really good. Um, it is on the thin side, so if you like a thicker sock yarn, you may not like this, but if you don't care, it's a really good sock yarn for the price. And I like the design. I like the Fair Isle design that they threw on there. Um, and like I said, it did get a little thicker after washing, so yay! So I just want to give you guys my impression of the sock yarn. I probably would buy more in different colors. Um, I only bought these two colorways. Um, let me tell you the numbers real quick in case you're interested in the. This one is color H2145. And these are going to be for me, and this one is in H2147. Um, if you're interested in the colors. But I think they have like, geez, I don't know, 12 colors? 13 colors maybe on the website? I'm kind of guessing. Um, but I would definitely buy it again. Okay. And also, I just wanted to say, I don't think I mentioned it, but I wanted to kind of mention it if, if you guys are new to sock knitting, that um, I started about, depending on the sock yarn, anywhere from 62 to 64 to 64 stitches in the foot. But then I also intend to increase before the heel. And then if you're going to make a really long cuff, you do have to do your increases because you know the calf gets bigger the higher up you go. I don't think I mentioned that. So you will see like little bumps here and there because I do do increases uh, just to make one left or a make one right. I usually do like a couple of increases every few inches as it goes up the leg. Oh, and my bind off is super stretchy. And I use, um, I don't know what it's called, the Russian bind off, I think. Um, I'll try to find the name of it, but it's, you knit, instead of doing a standard bind off where you knit one, knit another one, pull that second stitch over the first stitch, you knit one, knit another one, and then pull a stitch over two stitches. I think that might be a Russian bind off. I don't know, I've done it forever. Since my one of my second I think my second pairs of socks ever, I made the cuff too tight and so I've been using this ever since because it doesn't flare. Because some of the other really stretchy bind offs flare out when their socks are sitting there, they'll flare really badly and I hate that. So this one doesn't flare but it gives you the really good stretch you need to get the sock on. And um, also just to kind of um, fill you in that when I give you the prices for these balls, keep in mind that each of these balls is one sock. So on Knit Picks, it's, I don't know, five bucks a ball on sale. And the Croix is five, over five bucks a ball. You know, I think Knit Picks can go up to six bucks a ball. That's one sock in these. So double that for the price. So 10 to 12 dollars at least to get a pair of socks out of these guys whereas the hobium is you get two socks out of one ball for six dollars um, so just to be clear on that and then for softness I realized I didn't even cover softness this is not a super soft yarn it's kind of in the middle it's not super rough it's not super soft knit picks yarns are really soft and they hold up pretty well but they do pill on me a lot all my um, knit pig socks that I've had for years are kind of pilly, but do keep in mind I'm not hand washing, I'm kind of washing them in the washer um, gentle and then I'm um, air drying them. So if I probably hand washed them like in the sink, they probably wouldn't pill as much. But softer yarns will just pill more. It's just the way it goes. The croys don't pill as much, um, and I wash them the same way. I put them in a washer on a gentle cycle and air dry. Um, because I have way too many hand knit socks to do them by hand, sorry. Um, but uh, this is not as soft as Knit Picks. But it's a little tiny bit softer than the Hobium. So that's kind of a good sign with socks is to have it a little tiny bit rough. It means it's a tougher yarn. And it won't pill and it probably won't wear through as easy. So yeah, they're not super soft. They're not Knit Picks soft. They're not some of those other brands soft. But it's it's not enough to bother me in the roughness. So, and I kind of I'm okay with that for socks to have a little roughness to the yarn. And that's it.